My name's Owen. I'm the Dungeon Master of our Return of the Giants campaign. Um, hey guys, um, I'm Jared. I'm playing the character of Crassus uh, Antares, a Astral Elf Wizard. Hi everybody, I'm Michael. I'm playing Tetra Aeonite, a uh, Circle Stars Druid. Hi, my name's Claire. I am playing Naudis, or Now, who is a Dwarven Forged Fighter. Uh, hi, I'm Ali, and I'm playing Lyra, the Eldering Druid. Hi, I'm Matt. I'm playing Niall Silverman, the uh, Monk Owlin. Hi guys, my name's Simon. I'm playing the character of Ember. He wants to be a master of wildfire, but does he have the skills to be best one? <laughs> Hi, I'm Dave. My character is Harry Harrington the Herringon, a roguish merchant with a heart of gold. Hello! Oh, hi. Hello, hello everybody, and welcome back to the Lost Archives for our Return of the Giants campaign. It's lovely to see your faces again. How are you guys doing? We hope you've been doing really well. We're doing really well, and we're very, very excited for some D&D. Um, no crazy fun announcements today. The I think the very last episode of Tears of the Kingdom will have dropped by the time you're watching this, if you're watching it on YouTube or listening on the podcast. Um, so that Tears of the Kingdom is now finished and the entire series is up uh, on YouTube if you want to watch it. I had a lot of fun playing it. It was, it was absolutely amazing. And uh, I'm very hyped to um, find my next next game to play. So if you've got any suggestions of something you'd like me to play next while we wait for Starfield to come out, because I think I will I think I will play Starfield next, um, drop, it, drop it in the comments. I'd be, I'd be keen to hear your thoughts. Um, that's pretty much the main, uh, the main news that I had uh, that was fun. Um, Obviously tonight we've got our lovely characters, Dave and Simon, no, they're players. Our lovely players, Dave and Simon back who are playing the characters of Harry and Ember. Uh, it's lovely to have you guys back and joining us once again. Um, I promise, and I know I made this promise last week, but I promise this time, the next time you hear this, you will be in the intro overlay. In fact, if you're watching this on YouTube, hopefully I'm organized enough and I've already done it. So you will have heard them introduce themselves as they came in. Um, to this particular session. So hopefully, hopefully I was organized enough to get that finished. Uh, for those of you watching on Twitch though, uh, you will not have seen that. You will have just seen the normal standard, uh, standard intro. Um, we're gonna get started really soon. I'll do a full recap and we will jump straight back in. Just wanted to give a really quick heads up in advance that you're gonna be seeing a lot of homebrew stuff in tonight's session. We're playing around with a new system of classes and races for these visions that the characters have had when they um, see the past through the eyes of the giants. This is very much still a bit of a work in progress, so bear with us if there's any technical difficulties. We're, we've done our best to kind of get everything set up and working well beforehand, um, but it is still teething in some ways, and uh, none of the things we're going to be showing off tonight have been play tested. Uh, this is us play testing them as we do our sessions. So. I, I'm pretty confident they were all fairly balanced with each other, so we'll have to see as we uh, as we play them out. That's my only uh, only heads up in advance as we get into this session. So let me do a quick recap. Unless anyone else had any fun news to share or anything exciting, Dave, you're forbidden from mentioning Xbox Games Plus. <laughs> okay, well, there is a subscription service that Starfield will be on from day one. And Dave's muted, so we're not going to listen to any more of that. Um... <laughs> <laughs> oh. Baldur's Gate. Baldur's Gate there. three. Yes. Oh baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, oh, I'd be keen baby. to get a keen to get an adventuring party together for that one as well. I think. Did, yeah. did you guys see the the clip? Um, oh of, yeah. Uh, the the bear. I sure did. <laughs> no. What's this? Uh -oh. it's, it's so weird. Oh, oh, it's so weird. This is a conversation so for, so uh, weird. Yeah. Yeah. This is uh, <laughs> after eight thirty p.m. You guys are genuinely uncomfortable. What 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 do you mean? What's happened with a bear? <clears throat> So like, what is, what is the like, what is the quintessential D and D experience when you're, uh, you know, a bard seducing all types of creatures? Uh, hopefully not. I thought it was seducing a dragon. <laughs> I thought that was no, the not quite. But you got to build up we to probably, that. We probably we probably could do that, <laughs> but no. They they showcase in their uh, in their little hour showcase of uh, Baldur's Gate. Oh, no. You can seduce the druid in bear shape. Um. And there's a full like cutscene. No, cut you see people laughing yep. in the background. It was that's, great. Yep. That's a bad call on their part. That's I don't think, I don't think that should freedom, be. In. Freedom of expression. No, but there's some things that are limited for a good Look, reason. It's, it's got people talking, so you know that's that's <laughs> something. <laughs> I don't know. I I have very. Uh... I was on the fence whether to play or not, and now I'm sold. 
<laughs> that's a concern, Dave. That um, we might need to we might need to Look, talk I, about. I, 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 I've watched videos about this, and people have said like, you know, lots of people, lots of companies spend millions of dollars on their marketing to get the game to get the word out about their new game. Right? I know. Yep. All it took was like. 10 seconds or not 10 seconds but a few minutes to showcase this one aspect of the game which to be honest was like oh we're just going to go through the romance options we're going to show you how deep it goes and they've just showed this one piece of it and everyone's just lost their minds and it's like yeah i can see why that's yeah yeah (laughs) okay well i would i where i'm guessing i'll find this on youtube if i type in Baldur's gate 3 probably from the sounds of it definitely Done. Like all right well see. i know what i'm doing after uh, after we wrap up the session today um god okay i'm looking forward to that well i'm not i'm <laughs> i'm very much uh very much concerned about what i might be about to witness but um okay yep let me do a, a recap to get us back into the zone of our session and we will begin so the tempest adventuring guild a name now legendary across the lands of nostea has formed a brand new team Lyra, Tetra, Niles, Naudis, and Crassus have been sent to the nearby settlement of Laspire to locate the hill giant fort recently seen flying overhead in the nearby area. Teaming up with Harry, a travelling Harangon merchant, and Ember, a furbolg druid, the group have travelled deep into a cave network to locate and rescue captured villagers from the town. With the assistance of Balthazar, a mage from Oxenfurt, the team were able to portal the villagers out of harm's way while they faced off against the cultists and their leader, a white crystal ganassi, Kavanus similar in appearance to Tetra. After an extremely tense battle, the team were victorious, managing to slay Kavanus despite taking some pretty heavy damage themselves. Just as the team began to search for clues of what the cult had been doing near Laspire, the damaged giant relic implanted into Kavanus seemed to activate, causing the matching implants to begin pulsing on the hands of each of the team. We left off last session as your vision suddenly begins to tunnel darkness closing in on all signs uh, on all sides you're hearing taking on this very high-pitched ringing noise as sound almost begins to muffle and mute around you your skin feels cold on the surface and there's this feeling of rushing or moving very rapidly through an empty space the ground underneath you falls away as your vision turns completely black darkness overtaking your senses It's impossible to know how long this sensation lasts. Something about this this loss of sensory input throws out your perspective of time, even for a moment your perspective of self, before suddenly pinprick of light in front of you suddenly begins to grow larger and larger. As the world comes rushing back towards you, you find yourself blinking against this sudden bright sunlight your hearing still muffled for a few moments, and then as you open your ears and pop your ears by yawning, suddenly sound comes back again. You're standing on solid ground in a room, a large stone vaulted ceiling high above you. Around the windows and walls, you can see these intricate designs of twisting, curling metal and beautiful stained glass shapes flow across one another, forming almost what looks to be this vortex of light and color and as you blink and your vision finally begins to focus you find yourselves in an unfamiliar yet familiar sight around you you see six other giants standing there and as you look down at yourselves you no longer appear as you once did You are the giant forms that you had inhabited previously. Some of you have changed, though. What I'm going to do really quickly is go through each of you and describe very quickly what you see as you look down at your bodies and then across at your (coughs) companions, just so you get a bit of an understanding about what you you look at. Um, Matt and Claire, as Niles and Naudis look down, they see that they have this light blue skin slightly taller than their other companions um lightning occasionally crackling across their fingertips and up their body as they sort of clench as you you clench and unclench your fists getting a feeling for this this location that you're in 
you are dressed in these flowing robes which have been tied back and pinned in various locations by what look to be almost gemstone like devices emblazoned and encapsulated within these copper and brass containments wires running from them and electrum wires wow. binding them all together you have taken on the form of storm giants niles you are a male storm giant uh, as you reach up and feel around your chin you have a short beard that's been neatly trimmed you can feel hair tied back into what feels like a, a long braid that actually wraps down and ties back behind you two smaller braids hanging down the right hand side of your face your hair is this beautiful gray white Niles the other thing about your character as well is that as you look at your hands you can see that you have many rings dotting across your fingers that seem to have this sort of like binding of electrum joining them together now as you look down you seem to have taken on a female storm giant form you can see that you have that very almost like a, a light brilliant white uh, long hair again braided much much longer than uh, the niles the storm giant form uh, and you're wearing yeah, again very similar robes similar light blue skin but rather than rings you have what look to be lengths of chain binding together up onto a bracer that then connects to these uh, almost like little ringlets on your fingers bound by these electrum chains back up to the large bracer uh let's do yeah let's do our cloud giants next um ali and uh michael so uh lyra and tetra you have both taken on cloud giant forms um both of you appear to be female cloud giants. Uh, again, long hair, but this time, rather than tied up and braided very tightly, your hair floats around you, almost occasionally moving in this absentee wind. Slightly purplish tinged skin uh, for both of you. And rather than long flowing robes, you appear to be wearing what looks almost like a slight flight suit. Not too dissimilar in some ways to what Crassus wears in in style and functionality almost like crassus's outfit maybe was inspired by this particular look these sections of material bound together to form a very close fitting um almost like one piece suit but made of many many different parts of materials all all bound together forming this uniform appearance uh for both of you it is a dark slate grey but you can see that there are sections along it which glow and pulse very softly almost with a, a light luminescence um, as these lines of light run, run across them. We'll do our fire giant next. Ember, rather appropriately, <laughs> as you look down, um, you appear to attack the form of a, of a large fire giant. Um, occasionally little wisps of flame rise off the back of your hand and up your arm and as you look across you appear to be wearing uh, almost this interlocking plate style armor made of a strange it's not metal though as you, as you touch it and feel it it almost feels like this slightly warm hard like resin like material but these dark gray slate overlocking plates that almost give the appearance of a chitin like exoskeleton that you're wearing across your chest and halfway down one of your arms the other arm completely bare lines of tattoos of this pulsing red light line the other arm forming these intricate designs of flame and fire rising slowly up your arm and as you feel at your head you can feel your hair itself is actually a flame burning softly with this warm light and finally no two more sorry uh crassus jared you as you look at yourself you have become a frost giant almost this like white light blue skin tone dressed in very intricate beautiful furs creating this almost um very warrior tribal like appearance but still this element of almost like it's a traditional outfit not for functionality as you look you can see underneath you're wearing a very fine uh, tightly made tunic which actually binds very closely to your to your chest it sits very tightly across your chest um, long white beard braided and you're actually holding uh, in your hand what looks to be a, a large helmet um, again made of this beautiful almost like white ice metal inscribed with these softly glowing runes that very faintly glow with this dark blue energy 
and Harry, as you look at yourself, your skin itself seems to have been carved out of stone. Cracks and uh, fragments of your skin have opened up to reveal stone underneath. And as you look at yourself, you realize that you are a stone giant. As you reach up and feel around your head, completely smooth, bald head. And as you look down at your clothing. Yes? Hello, Dave. What do my ears look like? You don't have, like, pressed against your head, just tiny holes as you feel them. <clears throat> Almost like one of them's been cracked off, the top half of your ear missing, just leaving this, like, jagged, cracked section of stone. <clears throat> and as you look Harry down at your clothing. What was that, sorry? Harry cries a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> as you, uh, as you look down at your clothing, um, you can see that you are dressed in what looks to be these uh, layered sections of um, clothing bound very tightly to your legs, bound very tightly to your arms, but very loose around the chest, shoulders, almost, um, and, and, and very and that short sleeve as well. So short, short sleeves on the arms, short sleeves on the legs to keep your arms and legs bare, interestingly enough. And as you look down and then look up at each other, you can almost see this after image around each of you showing your true form, showing what you really look like, showing Niles, Crassus, now this Tetra, but only for a brief second as you look at each other. And you know that you are looking at your companions. You know that this is your friends that you've just seen, but to your eyes, they appear as if giants once again. You're muted, Jared. Oh, I'm not talking to you. Steph keeps coming that's in. Fair. <laughs> hey, Steph. Sorry, that's, that's why I'm that's muted. <laughs> Polly. No, no, that's fine. Um, that's that's the full description. So as you, as you look at each other, you can see like you know it's your your companions you know that it's you uh for those of you who have experienced this vision before this feels very familiar to the last time um the room that you've awoken in seems different to the previous one it looks like this is some sort of meeting hall in fact you can see in front of you a massive wooden table covered in large sections of scrolls and large tomes leather-bound tomes written in the giant language and in the very center of the table, what looks to be a massive map that has been meticulously hand drawn. But as you stare at it, you watch as the drawing lifts off the page and then forms an illusionary sphere showing the world of Mustea hovering just above this map as it blinks and pulses with light. Underneath a slate tablet pushing the illusion through this hand drawn map. And that is what you see. So, um, Elsa. I would at least, I would sort of look at my hand, because last time we were here, I was a fire giant, so yeah, switch to the frost giant. So <clears throat> I look around, look at all my compatriots. So, um, why are we here? Oh, this is not my voice. Huh? I s this is most unusual. Just so you know, Jared has elected to do this of his own free will. Because <laughs> well, I'm like, I'm in the giant. I, yeah. I didn't change his vocal yeah, yeah. cords. So it's, it's up to you. So, so because your companions know it's you, they can either hear your voice as it is. So remember last time when you spoke, even though you felt you were speaking common, the giants around you seemed to understand you as if you were speaking giant, and you could understand them even though they were speaking giant to you. So something about this is a bit odd already. Like the fact that you know it's your companions, the fact that you can always understand each other, Something already is a bit fishy, but yeah, if, if, absolutely. If you wanted to to inhabit the giants and take on a bit of a voice, please do. I um, I feel different to be honest. This this is quite strange. This new voice, there's something in me this further, something I haven't felt before. Battle beckons to me, but that is not what I normally go for. How are you all feeling? I feel so different from last time. I feel rather grounded. Just, like, tap my back. <laughs> uh, nice. Ah, so you must be Niles then. You can no see, as, when, see, whenever you look at your companions, there's almost like this after wow. image as you blink. Okay. Yeah. And you can see <clears throat> your, your, uh, the after image of your companions. So it's, it's subtle, but if you look for it and concentrate and then blink again, you can see this after image every time. And you know that it's your companions. You know who they are, even through this this strange sensation, this strange form that you seem to have taken on. This is a rather strange form. Oh, sorry. Oh, I was I was just gonna say. I mean, these bodies, like, where 
all seem to be in this room. Like, you know, it's not as if we're like, you know, inhabiting bodies that didn't have people in them previously. I mean, are we just sort of squishing down the original inhabitants or, um, I don't know, they're not going to try and fight back or anything, are they? Wait. Do anyone feel dangerous? Where's my notes? I start rummaging through my pockets. There's no notes. Your spell book is gone. It never was here. <laughs> That's Crassus's body. As you look through your stuff, you find no hint of any of your previous possessions, just the possessions of this frost giant. Because I keep searching through, sorry. Um, continue. That is a rather strange thing. It appears that all of our previous possessions have have departed. And wherever we are now, we, we seem to be inhabiting these bodies. I mean, so this is the second we're... time most of you have experienced this. Ember, this is, and Harry, this is your first time. I was going to say, this there's people panic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, maybe, maybe it's an exchange of some sort. Perhaps if uh, we're in these bodies, they're in the house. Oh, I hope, I hope not. Hmm. Yeah, no, I, I, I didn't, I didn't brush my teeth. That was very uncomfortable for them. Ah, oh. maybe after this, I will leave a note in mine, in my notes, and maybe the giant will leave one back for next time, of course. But now, is there anything that we need to do? Well, I think it's, uh, this map in the middle probably should be uh, looked at at least for a little bit. Oh, is there a a map in the middle? Do you not see it? This large floating thing. It's projecting the oh. You You see hovering above the table is this illusionary map of the world, a globe slowly rotating in place, but the world looks different to how you remember it. The land masses seem oddly positioned and placed. In fact, you can't even see any evidence of the Shattered Isles. There's no evidence of this band of archipelago stretching down from the equator down to the south of Oceania. Oceania seems to be partly joined to what is now Balmia, the Dwarven Kingdoms, this massive continent that the Dwarves now inhabit. There's no sign of that at all. It looks like they've become, or they were, one. More importantly, you can see that the island that you now know is the Draconic Nations, Chiari, uh, seems much larger in this image than it did and it has when you've seen it or if you've seen maps of, of your world in your time. Is there any markings on the map about like, uh, you are here? Like <laughs> <laughs> the <laughs> illusionary <laughs> map, the illusionary map has no markings, sigils, symbols or anything. It just shows the continent outline as it hovers slowly in place. Underneath it, you can see the paper map that has been beautifully drawn and sketched and filled out, has a number of giant runes signifying locations. As you look over it, you can see that there is a marking where the city of Palin would be, but there's a series of giant runes there describing uh, another place. As you concentrate and focus on it for a second, you feel like you could almost read the runes, but then there's this resistance and they stay indecipherable to you. Well, that gets me a headache, but I think we might be uh, here. Possibly. I mean, it sort of makes sense, I think. Why does that make sense? There's the sound of footsteps and the door at the far end of the room opens, revealing a figure that is familiar to some of you. A storm giant male, dressed in long flowing robes with a crown made of electrum upon his head, strides into the room. Long white beard, beautifully braided and tied with various gemstones, hair combed back and braided as well. And as he strides in and looks up towards of you, those of you who have seen this figure before recognize King Mjorn, the leader of the giants in this time. Ah, my friends, how has the, uh, how has the decision making been going? I'm sorry I had to step out for a moment. I needed to, uh, Talk to my wife, our daughter, Sarissa, is um, causing some problems. Oh, no, 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 don't be worried about that, my friend. I do have a question to ask. We got a little bit sidetracked. Could you present us the options again so we can make the, you know, the, um, we can come up with a solution <laughs> clearer? 
with um oh uh, uh, we've reminisced too much about the 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 times we've had together indeed our friend here uh, we've got been talking we've got such right yes uh, uh, of, of course uh, um well uh, we were hoping to find places that we could look at settling the uh, elves now that they have come through the uh, the portal the uh, the yeah, I mean, none of us expected this, but now that we are offering them asylum on our world, we are trying to find a place that we can house them. Well, what is uh, what have they told you, told you that they prefer? What sort of climate or or sort of conditions do they do they seem to gravitate towards? Oh, these these elves uh, simply uh, expressed a preference for somewhere with. Uh, connection to the to the natural wilds that they uh, used to call home back in the Feywilds, uh, a place of great natural beauty. Obviously our world is filled with such locations we are <laughs> spoiled for choice in this blessed land. I was wondering if you'd had any thoughts of, of where we could position the uh, the elves who have who've come to us for help. Where are the elves in present day? Oh, currently we are housing them in I'm sorry, but that was, that was to Owen. Oh, to me. Oh, everywhere. Sorry. Every, everywhere. The elves are everywhere. You know that okay. there are uh, um, like wood elves. So, so Oshia, Oshia at some point in the past, it's not really known when. Oshia is kind of like a melting pot of humans, elves, halflings. So the, the elves and humans kind of share Oshia with the halflings and with a bunch of other right. races as well. The Ganassi uh, own the, the southern half of Oshia, which is the elemental states, but the rest of Oshia, the whole continent is a is a melting pot. High elves generally live in most of the same cities as humans do. Astral elves are one of the exceptions. They almost all exclusively live on the sky cities. In fact, there's one sky city in particular, Volus, which they have inhabited, but that's because their time there turns them into astral elves. So it's... Uh, <laughs> It's kind of a chicken right. and egg situation. <laughs> so there isn't like a specific like city that the elves. No, the elves. From. The elves don't have a specific city. There's there's a couple of enclaves out in the wilds where um, wood elves and and fur bogs who are, who would um, commune with nature as, as uh, rangers or druids might live. But there's no there's no sort of set elven cities. Not like the dwarves and dragons who have their own set locations. Mm -hmm. The elves at some point opened their borders to humans, halflings, and the other races of Oshir, and it's sort of become a bit of a, a communal shared area. The who would know this? Crassus would know this. Probably probably only Crassus. Crassus, you would know that at some point in the past, um, after the giants had disappeared, the the high elves had spires that they constructed around um Oshia. However, something happened to those spires, something the elves have kept secret, but they abandoned the spires and the spires all crumbled into dust, their magic gone, causing them to fail and fall. Uh, after humans had arrived, after the giants had disappeared, but before, long, long before any of the uh, sort of uh, records helpfully would indicate. And the elves have been very cagey with that information. It's kind of a bit of a mystery why the high elves have been mm. in their spires. And I guess as well, being an astral elf, we do have obviously a bit of ancestry with them, but that doesn't mean we know their secrets. Sort of mm. two different races in a way. So, okay. Yeah. Um, okay, that's interesting. <clears throat> mm. I think um, Niles probably just looks around the room <laughs> looking for someone <laughs> just to chime in. Like, this, like his eyes kind of widen a little bit and goes... Yes, indeed. Where will the elves go? This is King, a rather, a rather big decision. <laughs> like... King, King Mjorn, as he steps up and looks at the map, picks up the paper map and goes, "Oh, this is a lovely, lovely piece of work. Uh, who, who created this? This is beautiful. Is this to give to our guests to help them locate their lands? We might need to make it a little bit smaller." As he holds up this giant-sized map, underneath you can see a slate. Um, almost this like copper verdigris bronze machine underneath that is displaying a perfect view of Nostea and shining the illusion up through the map. As he takes the map away, the illusionary sphere becomes even more crisp and clear. Color begins to move across it and you can see the waves, the oceans, the continents, uh, as well as a number of what look to be flying land masses moving around very slowly across the, uh, across the skies. It is very cool. Oh, 
We thought you made it. Uh, my artistic <laughs> talents, uh, it skipped a generation. Unfortunately, I am i am no artist. <laughs> uh, it is a shame. No, this is wonderful. I, I, will, uh, I will get this uh, copied smaller, shall I? See if one of the giant forged can... Uh, can create a duplicate for us. That sounds great. I think we did <clears throat> that. Access, he calls out. You watch as striding into the room is a construct, a man made of gears, brass, bronze, similar to Loki, but not Loki. Where Loki has these beautiful plates of interlocking metal, this creature, this construct, is made of swirls of metal forming what looks like look like spirals of outer exoskeleton. Inside you can see the gears spinning in place, turning and moving as this thing walks. It is a work of art. As it strides in, the creature which has three eyes, one gemstone in the head, two on either side, no mouth, turns, looks down at the map, looks back up at King Mion. Your orders, sir. Axis, could you make a copy of this? Please, we will need uh, probably several made. And if you could store it in the uh, database as well, that would be fantastic. Of course, sir. Right away. Reaches out, takes the map, and then begins moving out of the room. Before you go, um, I think we wrote a few notes or runes on the side of that. Um, I can't remember what we wrote, though. <laughs> Ooh, nice try, Ember. That's good. No, I like that. King Mion goes, Axis, Axis. Hold on a second. Takes the map and goes, Um looks around as King Mjorn studies the, the map and goes, sorry, which runes did you want to memorize? Puts it down on the table for you and, and gestures you over, Ember. Um, so I'm going to look at the ones where we were trying to read but couldn't make out before and I'll go, oh, just the ones down the side here. Nicely done. Um, King Mjorn says a word. There's this almost like a rushing sound as if sound itself is being pulled through into a vacuum. And everything around you, all other noise, suddenly disappears as you hear this like slight ringing in your ears. And then as he finishes saying the word, sound rushes back as normal. Cool. Um, I want to ask him to speak up, but... Um... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, oh, this, this is what happened to them last time ears. when they tried to get yeah. names and things like that. Things, some, Something about this, there's something wrong with this. Something odd is happening. This is what happened last time when you guys tried Am to I... find out your names. Oh. So, I, he, did he actually say it was a name? Before he, he said a word. You watch as he opens just... his mouth and then sound just leaves for a second. There's this ringing and then a sound rushes back again. He finishes, nods and smiles at you and goes, was there anything else? It's very interesting. Um... You haven't, you haven't heard that word before, but it's, no, and no, he, no, says, it's uh... he says the word again. There's this like absence of noise. It's, it's one of our capital cities. What are you, are you feeling well? Oh, oh, King, King oh. John, it's, 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 it's all good. Um, perhaps I should talk to one of your, uh, medical staff. Uh, there's a strange phenomenon I've been having with my ears. Just, just. Just voices and, and phrases seem to cut out every now and then. I don't, I don't quite know why. As you say voices, to you watch as King Mjorn kind of stiffens for a little bit and turns towards you, Niles. Voices. We have heard the primordials have been active of late. Have you heard their whisperings again? Possibly? Maybe? <laughs> I, I will need to deal with this at once. Please excuse me if, if the primordials are attempting to break through the barrier once more. We need to be aware and ready for this. I will return what, what, momentarily. What exactly would we be looking for with the primordials? Well, Anam has told us to beware whispered voices promising power in exchange for belief. Oh. Hmm. That is good to know, old friend. <laughs> yes. Do you have any other tasks for us? Um, I know that we were finding the um, a, a suitable location, but um, I can't quite remember if you uh, mentioned the a few other tasks. Were there? Oh yes, yes. Yeah, once were there you any have... other races? 
Any other races? Oh, that you wanted us to help settle. He sort of looks really confused. There's only the elves and us. Oh. Oh, Unless, sorry. I... Has Sarissa been... Is there something I need to know? <laughs> he looks really confused. Oh, no, no, no. Sinmari, sorry, not Sarissa. Sinmari, sorry. Sinmari. It was all Sinmari. very exciting when the when the elves came through. I got a bit confused. Apologies. No, no, uh, not at all. I, oh, are the el- are they not all just elves? Is this? Am I being a bit insensitive? Are they are they are they different from each other in some way? <laughs> no, I, oh, I, I think. I, no, 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 no. One thing is that I, I think what our friends referring to is some of them brought little pets and things with them. So maybe we, you know, we wouldn't think about sort of the uh, the environmental ramifications of you know just letting these creatures go. Ah, oh, we'll need to know if they brought creatures from the Feywilds. Here, yeah, we'll need to know at once from what we've from what we've understood from our studies into the Feywilds. The the Fey are capricious and can be dangerous if uh, if left unchecked. Perhaps, uh, perhaps I should look into this once we have. I, I, I'm sorry. Please excuse me. I must look into this situation with the uh, with the primordials. But um, oh, your task. Yes, of course, you are to go and speak to the uh, the representatives from the Elven Council. Once you have decided on a location, make sure they are aware. We will organise transportation and then speak to any of the giant lands that you have had to uh, reallocate and redistribute for Elven settlement. Ah, uh, excellent. I understand. Uh, I mean, when I was here before, it seems like you'd narrowed it down to two or three locations. Uh, you may have to speak to the hill giants. Uh, it sounds like they will be the most affected by this particular uh, decision. Their lands uh, look to be the, the most likely, the most fertile for, for growing food and for, for game, for the elves to settle mm. and become self-sufficient. Open to this um, topic, were they, last time it was brought up, um... Were they quite resistant or sort of uh, a little bit more open to the idea? The hill giants know their place. They will follow directions as they are given. Of course. It is a shame they didn't send a representative. It would have been nice to uh, at least have a show of unity, but if they're going to be going against the R thing, then I... they can't be upset when a decision is made in their absence, can they? Um... Add a game real quick, sorry, Owen. Hello. Um, no, 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 no. Is there, a, is there a, uh, just, I think we had a talk about this last time. Is there a giant ordning in your world? Uh, so there's not an ordning per se. Each of the giants, so it's, so it's a little bit different for Nostea. So there's not an ordning mm. as like a strict social hierarchy, uh, as like a, this is your place in it. You serve a noun by serving your, your kind. It's more uh, like the traditional Nordic things where each giant clan, hill, stone frost fire cloud storm sends a representative who who represents them um for some of them it's called a yarl for some of them it's a chief for some of them it's a um reeve they've all got different names within it but each mm, okay. representative attends the old thing which is presided over historically by the representative of the storm giants who is known as a king all right so storm so, giants typically equal king but it sounds storm like giants, everyone else is pretty equal yeah, so, so that's, it's not like a it's like a strict social hierarchy. Uh, it's more a hierarchy in terms of their willingness to work together for the old thing. But the the king of the storm giants, who is also the leader of the old thing, is kind of seen as the mediator and tiebreaker for the other giant clans, and and kind but of they, the, but they as sorry, but they're strictly storm giants, right? Storm giant yeah. king, who then leads the old thing. Traditionally, they've been the one to okay. lead the old thing. So does he does he act as a representative for the Storm Giants too? Yes, he does. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I'm just oh. trying to figure out where, like, just in case, like, I don't want to like feel too familiar with the king and him be like, Put, you're not talking in your place, sort of thing. That's cool. Yeah. No. Oh, no. Yeah, you yeah. you you guys know this from your chat with uh, Lockie previous. I think you you asked some of these questions with Lockie before you guys came. Mm. It's, it's it's more of a meeting of equals with everyone except the king is slightly more equal because he's the arbiter and the host yes mm, yeah. Yeah. imagine also, imagine it's it's a lot like the united nations where everyone's supposed to be equal but that's not how it works out at all <laughs> yeah. yeah it also sounds like within your clan there's like a status sort of breakdown like i'm sure where at the top of the clan you got like the yarl or whatever and then yeah down, so for down. frost yeah. giants and fire giants both of them call their <laughs> representative the yarl um, for hill giants, it's a chief. For stone giants, it's the dreamer, which 
the other giants don't know much about or why it's called that. Uh, and for cloud giants, uh, it's Chancellor. Okay, cool, 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 cool. What? Yeah, cool. Please, uh, you must excuse me. I, I need to... Um, I need to go and speak to uh, to my wife and to Sinmare about this. If the primordials are active once again, perhaps we should warn the elves. No, the primordials wouldn't want to speak to them. No, never mind. Idle ramblings. It could, uh, it could be worth. I mean, you know, we never know. I mean, you know, maybe these elves might be more susceptible to primordial influence. From what I understand, uh, they've not been able to hear or see any signs of them. We, we obviously, we some of us can summon the primal magic, but the elves, as far as we're aware, can't see or interact with it. So I, I suspect it's nothing to be concerned about. And none of the fae came through with them. It, it was only the elves, right? It was only the elves. Uh, we did a very thorough check. Uh, had some scanners running through the crowd once the elves had come through the portal and. We were able to confirm that while they are uh, fey in nature, they are not uh, arch fey or true fey. It seems the elves, uh, their, their story, their, their uh, tale of uh, imprisonment and, and slavery by the arch fey seems somewhat true. That's why we've offered them asylum on our world. Until they can find a, a place to call their own, we will continue to search the, the various worlds until we find a planet that they will find suitable. And once we have done so, they will travel through and colonize this new world. A hundred years we have. I, I wonder if it would be worth because I mean, if they are, you know, they're from the Feywild, I wonder if it'd be, they would have sort of um, environmental preferences. Maybe we could work something like that into the bargain. That's so, what I thought. Yeah, I mean, I mean, like you know, as you know, as far as we do, you know, some of us like the cold, some of us like the hot. Maybe they would have some. So we have like the you know our floating islands. Perhaps some, if they really wanted, they could go and have a dose. I mean, we don't have much use for them, and that would be a, a useful resource. A useful much place. useful? I think the cloud giants might have something to say about that. That's their... Well, yes, but, you know... As he, looks towards, you, as he looks towards you, Michael, um, you're a... You're a cloud I'm giant right, yourself. Right. He looks, he's really confused. He watches, he goes. Yeah, we don't use all of them. We just use the biggest ones. But you I know, can't believe you... I'm hearing this. Normally the cloud giants are very protective of their sky castles. Uh, oh yes, not give them a sky castle. Give them, like, you know, we have, we have little out of the way ones that we don't really use. Do you little... really? Yeah. Why all... is this the first I'm hearing about this? This is very <laughs> concerning. Look, we, We've been we... petitioning the cloud giants for, for decades. To have Look, more I, of your sky castles made available to us in the council. Oh, not like, sky castles. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the floating island on the sky castles are built on. Do you have land that you're not... Every time we've come to you for a proposal, you've knocked it back rather rudely, I should like to add. It's not useful for us. It's not useful for you. The islands are too small, but these are small people. King That's Bjorn, it. looking thoroughly confused turns towards the rest of you and for some reason seems to be focusing on the storm giants in the room as he focuses on claire your character now it is and uh and niles <laughs> okay he looks I, I just we've been petitioning for this for, where, how, you proposed this four years ago and you were told you were told that on no uncertain terms would cloud giant land ever be surrendered to and i quote the ground walkers Yes, I am very confused, King Bjorn. <laughs> I I don't know what's happening at all. <laughs> I will deal with this when I return. I, if, I think uh, there may have been a little bit of a misunderstanding here. I mean, in the terms of uh, keeping the peace, I mean, surely... I know the hill giants will know their place, but surely if only one of the giant clans were giving up their precious land... Um, it could turn into some sort of civil unrest. Plus, we also have to consider how many elves we're moving to these Sky Islands. Because if there's a lot of elves and a small Sky Island, they won't have a lot of room. So that is something to consider. Yes, but it would also contain them. I mean, I see, you know, I see you're taking from... your committee very seriously. I will leave you two of this to discuss. This is perfect. This is exactly the sort of questions you're here to answer and ask each other. Uh, when you've reached a consensus, 
Remember that we are trying to send a message to the Hill Giants that if they stop sending representatives to these councils and they get left out of the decision-making process, there will be consequences for them. Yes, so perhaps putting them all up in the sky may not be sending them the right message. Uh, I see. Yes. He gives you a nod and begins backing out the door slowly. <laughs> <laughs> before well, closing the close. door, before closing well, the door behind him and rushing off. Well, um, I just turn around and I'm like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> I don't know either. I'm tired. <laughs> So but the area that they're talking about, it's Palin, right? Yeah. As yeah, you yeah, look, you can just sort of like point your map. It's so so the the paper map that was taken away and given to this construct. Actually, no, sorry, King Beyond didn't take it back off you. He left it on the table. The construct is still standing there. Oh, yeah. This beautifully intricate spiral-like construct is just standing there, waiting for the map to be handed back. As you guys are sort of like discussing this, doesn't seem to be in the slightest bit concerned about your conversation. Can I ask I'll the? Yeah, the creature. Sure. Um, you know that the cap the capital that uh, our lord just mentioned. Whereabouts on the map is that? The construct moves forward with his very lithe grace, points down at the uh, the section you pointed to, right in the very centre of the continent, which almost looks like the Oceania that you know that you've come from. And goes, this location here is Palin, and then looks at you confused because it's heard you say the word Palin. Uh, I wish to do a quick experiment with you. Uh, will you comply? Of course. I am programmed to answer any and all questions posed to me. I wish for you to... Um, we would like some practice at um, uh, how the elves might uh, interact. So will you please treat us all as if we have no knowledge about the cities, cultures, locations... Um, you know, or, or something that, as if someone was brand new to this place, um, and could you please explain things to us as if you would uh, someone that was new? I mean, obviously they're not Very new, but, you Very know. clever, Ali. Of course, I am programmed <laughs> to comply with all directives. Um, yes, so, uh, what would be the, uh... <laughs> Access, <laughs> chat. Access, a, a, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna change. It was actually a x i s, but I'm actually gonna change it to the spelling a c c e s s because that just seems too appropriate now. <laughs> Access, yeah. yeah. Would you please uh, just point out to us um, which of the territories on this map uh, are of the hill giants? Of course. And then just sort of gives a panic look to everyone else, like ask your questions now before you. Uh. <laughs> Of course. Um, it, it looks at the paper map. You watch this like flicker of light and then it turns back up towards the globe, reaches its hand across, and as it reaches its hand up, you see the fingers begin splitting apart, moving into these lines of light, which reach forward and then begin painting across the illusion of the globe. The map paints itself, showing these areas of giant territory. Uh, the areas that are controlled by the hill giants light up with this light grey uh, light shining through the blue illusion. The primary locations are here towards the south. There is another out here towards the west and three more towards the north. These are only held in trust, however. The giants are not allowed to settle these lands. Only the south and west are habitable for the hill giants. Why are only the south and the west habitable for the hill giants? The hill giants have an insatiable hunger. It is best to keep them on a migratory path for their own self-preservation. They are allowed to settle lands for small periods at a time to allow the natural world to regenerate in their absence. Oh, it may not be wise to keep the hill giants and the elves together then. Mm. It might be a little bit of a problem. That would be a problem. And if you were to condense their um, uh, foraging lands, I suppose, uh, would that have an effect on their population? If we were to give this area, it will we'll, we'll just sort of like Note around like the, that uh, upper central area that they, they were at at the moment. If we were to give that area over to the elves, what kind of effect would that have on their population? Calculating. Calculating. At current state of hill giant population, area of land is satisfactory for continued survival of species. If population was to grow by 13.7%, more land would be required. Okay. Which that you um, have stored. 
Oh, oh sorry. Go ahead. Oh no. Um, a- access. Um, could you point? Well, actually, I don't know if you know this. Depends on how long we've been in your company for. Do you know who created this map? Could you point to them in the room if they're in here? Are you pointing to the the hand drawn map? Mm. Uh, well, the one that King Bjorn was impressed with. Yeah, the hand drawn map. Ah, oh, yep. good question. Um, you watch as Access looks and goes. I'm sorry, I do not recognize the penmanship. Was it one of you? If so, could you answer? Then I can add this information to my database. Is there a spare piece of paper around? Yeah. Yeah, there's loads um, of paper. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, uh, then I'm um, just going to get the... Um, Tetra's going to get a piece of paper or a pen and just, and just like, not think about it too much, just write something. Mm. Oh, okay. Tetra, could you please roll me? Eight. Could you please roll me a D20? Add nothing to this roll. Subtract nothing from this <laughs> roll. Just a flat D20 roll. This is great. Learning about your character. Tetra, you are not an artistic Ganassi. You have never been one to learn how to draw, to paint. It's never been something that you've been taught or that you've expressed any previous interest in. But something about this, as you look at the paper, there's a moment where you can almost feel the lines and the contours. Your mind kind of quietens. The distractions of what's going on around you fading away and your hand just flows across the page, charcoal in hand, as you begin sketching out intricate, detailed work of a copy of the map as you see it up on the uh, the floating illusionary globe in front of you. It looks very similar to the map that King Beyond was holding previously. I, I just meant to write my name, <laughs> okay. Uh, you may add proficiency in artists' supplies to your character Ooh. sheet for the giant Ooh. echo. Ooh, that's cool. So this is how you this is how you learn about the echoes and uh, and what they can do. That's a great example yeah. by Michael right there. That's great. Brilliantly done. Uh, you watch as Access looks down and then looks up and goes, I can confirm with ninety nine point eight percent probability that points over towards uh, towards you, Michael. Uh, created the same map. Holds up the map. Ah. Very good access. Um, another question, access. How long have we been here for? You have been here for three hours, 47 minutes, and 29 seconds. 30 seconds. 31 seconds. <laughs> and then <it> stops. <laughs> ah, that, that's, that's enough. That's enough. Um, how, how long have we been in this, uh, well, under the company of King Bjorn. You have been serving King Bjorn for, watch as he leans back and then leans forward. 38 years, nine months, 12 days. Stop searching that. <laughs> okay. Have some of us been here, uh, been in the company of the king for longer than others? Yes. Uh, affirmative. Uh, could you please uh, tell us uh, the durations of times that the rest of us have been in his company. This is such specific information. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> why not? Um, <laughs> why not? Um, Ali, as a as a cloud giant, uh, you've only been here for two years. Um, same for uh, Loki. Uh, it's not Loki. Oh my god, I need to get that out of my head. Same for Michael. Uh, for I'm Tetra. Start, I want to start the count. No, I don't want it. <laughs> it's going to be embarrassing. <laughs> it's going to make me feel bad. Um, Tetra, you've been here for about sort of like three years, maybe just a little bit longer than um, than Lyra. Um, now you're a fellow storm giant. As, uh, yeah, you're a storm giant. Uh, you've been here for um, almost 40 years. Uh, let me quickly go through. Um, Crassus as a frost giant, you've been here for five years. Um as a stone giant, Harry, you've been here uh, for 12 years. And as a fire giant, um, Ember, you've been only here for six months. Ah, uh, interesting. That's like, that's the that's the amount of time we've been under the- You've been working, you've been you've been under King Mion's okay. uh, leadership. Cause that was the specific question is how long have you been serving yep. King Mion? So that that's the answer yep. that 
That's right. Cool. So that's Six months doesn't it. feel like very long. What was my commencement date? <laughs> oh, that's a good question. Um, what would you hear? You wouldn't hear anything. Um, there's this moment of silence, that ringing in your ears, and then you see because you could because you can't see the mouth move for for access. There's oh, no mouth. Yeah. There's just the eyes. It almost sounds like access doesn't answer you. There's this like absence of sound for a few seconds, and then sound comes back again. Did you guys hear anything? No. Apologies. Diagnostics yeah, indicate I'm not malfunctioning. Did you not hear me? Do you know the language? Sorry. No, it's alright. Oh, I was just gonna say, do you do you know the language of these elves? Yes. Can you I have done my best and... to learn as much as I can, can in the short time it? they have been here. Yes, I believe can I can you... write up to five hundred six thousand. Sorry, five hundred sixty-seven thousand four hundred twenty-three words in Elvish. But we were thinking it could be good to know uh, the translation of our names in Elvish. Um. And so she gives him a pen and some paper. It's like, could you write um, the names of the people here in this room while pointing to them uh, in Elvish uh, on this paper? And she just wants to sort of see if it yeah. like is the same thing that happens with the runes, uh, or if she can understand the Elvish. Apologies. And today's date, if, uh, if possible. Apologies. <laughs> I'm, that's good. Apologies. I'm not sure I can translate your names to Elvish. I would need to know what your names in Elvish are to be able to translate. And I am not aware of what your names are in Elvish. Okay. In, in, in the date? I, I'm not sure. I could write the numbers uh, in Elvish, but I'm not sure if there's an Elvish calendar or are you asking me to write the way we present our time and dates in Elvish? Yes, that's If you don't know the Elvish calendar, then, then then use the Elvish alphabet to represent how we represent time and dates. Yeah. Um he writes down second era. Oh no. As you look at the page, none of your giant echoes speak Elvish. <laughs> it's just like a mess of scribbles. You have oh. no idea what the page says. <laughs> yes. <laughs> wow. I just realized, yeah, none of you would speak none of your giants speak Elvish. As you look at the page, it's a mess of scribbles as he holds it up and goes, Here you go. <laughs> that's such a good yeah, idea. That was well such done. a good idea. I'm so sorry that's not worked. <laughs> wow. Okay. Oh, that was... With your fingers. <laughs> oh, that's a joke. I like that. That's uh, well, do we need to give the elves somewhere to live? <laughs> I believe I that was the task assigned to you by King so. What was that, sorry? Bending. Access, access of the geopolitical situation and the suitable land habitation. Where would you calculate would be the most ideal location to place the elves? You watch to see, like, sort of pauses for a second. Calculating. 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 <laughs> and there's another pause. And then you watch as he holds his hand up and begins painting across the map again. A section of the southwestern half of Oceania turns this brilliant green. I believe this location should provide enough food and supplies for the elves to last as many generations as they need to be within the 100 years. The hill giants should be unaffected by this. Okay. I'm like looking at that location on the map. Um, would she know that like if that sort of lines up with sort of any historical or current Looks cities? Pretty from fucking her close to Oxenfurt. Mm. <laughs> All right. East. Your uh, assistance. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's uh, sorry on that west coast of Ocia, south southwestern coast of Ocia, it looks pretty fucking close to Oxenfurt. <laughs> mm. Your well, assistance is greatly appreciated. Thank you. Perhaps access if you could bring us back some snacks that would be much appreciated. Snacks, but of course. Thank you, access. May I take the map, please? Uh, to make copies, course. as King Mion had instructed. Indeed. Would you like oh, these copies to take with you to the elves? Oh, yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, just, just to the others. Um, are we gonna mark uh, the location of Oxenford? She's just sort of mouthing it so that you can't pick up the name in case it's not my butterfly wings. 
But um, should we just mark it on the map now or uh, we do that later? Podcast <laughs> listeners, <laughs> Michael, <laughs> would you like to describe what you do with your hands? Yeah, for podcast listeners, Tetra Goblin Giant um, did a couple little walking fingers and then a couple doors shutting and then she mimed talking and like, and then, um, and, and then, and mimed, um, uh, backwards and forwards, trying to, trying to say that, uh, wait for him to leave and then we'll figure it out. Oh, it's Kane's accent. Uh, all good. Okay. Perfect. Uh, will you need a translator for your trip to the elves? Yes. Yes. You have not organized one yes. already? It seems like we will. Of course. We can't remember. I will organize a translation matrix to come with you. Oh, amazing. Wonderful. Thank you. No problem. Thank we'll you. See you soon with some snacks. He nods. Axis opens the doors, walks out, and leaves you alone in the room. Okay. That's like some right? Uh, uh It does it does look like where Oxenfurt would normally go, so uh, as before, I think we choose that location. I think so too. Unless anyone has any better ideas? I'm sorry, no, I, I think... I, I don't think oh. we should stray too far. I think um, where they sort of should have went historically, we put them there so we don't mess around much with the time. Uh, sort of paradox and stuff. Well, I, I, yeah, I, I was sort of curious though. And I don't know why I had this thought, because I don't usually think this, but I was, I was curious that if we put them on one of the floor of the islands, would that, and then once we go back to our other bodies again, would that like have changed anything? I'll be honest, I think moving forward, you making that suggestion might explain why my people now live in floating castles. So that might have been a, a bit of a tie into the astral elves. Huh. So you could have just brought that into existence. (laughs) Well, you're welcome. And the best part is to avoid the paradox. That's how it always was. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yes. So any changes that you make in the past, technically you've already made in the future. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I'm finding it a bit hard to think straight without having, uh, well, not having any feathers. The sensation of not having a feather in my arms and legs is rather strange. So this is what it's like to have skin, is it? Actually, do you know what the weirdest thing for you, Niles, is that you're, you're used to moving your head rather than your <laughs> eyes. Yeah. So you, you still move your head every time you want to look somewhere. Your eyes don't move <laughs> the whole time. Yeah. And probably you're not blinking a lot, which is your eyes I are mean, really dry, Niles. <laughs> I probably look extremely awkward to everyone. Like I'm walking around the room and I'm just kind of like, it's it's okay, Niles. I also understand. For me, like I am quite, you know, thin. Here, I have muscles I have never seen before. Ah, I saw that. <laughs> so that I have muscles I don't even have a name for. <laughs> the muscles have muscles. Muscles yet I mean, unnamed I... by mere mortals. <laughs> I tried walking bef- just then, and I felt like I was about to trip over. I'm starting to, I'm getting. Trying to get a handle on this whole thing. It's a bit That's odd. a good point. When you would normally have like, would you have talons? Yeah. And... Did you do oh, yeah. talons? Legs yeah. also go the other way. Yeah. yeah. So you've never ever had feet. <laughs> yeah. Nope. Or, yeah. Or, or like Ali said, forward-facing knees. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, because that's technically your ankle. So like at the moment, from your mm. perspective, Niles, your whole foot and leg is pressed against the floor, and it's tiny. <laughs> And then your knees right at the top because birds have the, yeah. the the ankle joint is stretched right out back, so it looks like it's a yeah yeah yeah. Also, being like a very dexterous person, like normally, this is a yeah. very odd feeling where I'm just kind of like, oh, <laughs> like. I mean, kind of... are, are wings limbs? Because if they are, you're technically missing two, two limbs. limbs. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, yeah. I'd yeah. say that. Especially as you guys are sort of having these moments of discussion, uh, you watch as Access comes back in holding uh, what can only be described as a metal Lazy Susan piled high with foods that he places down on the table, uh, along with a stack of papers tiny in his hands that you know for your characters would be pretty large, like A2 or A1 sheets of paper of maps, but in his hands are just tiny. 
as he is uh, currently the same size as you as a giant. He places these down too and goes, I have found a translation matrix for you. It will be here shortly. Ah. Perfect. Access? I believe Sinmari wants to come as well. Have you all met Sinmari before? I think we have familiar. before on the occasion. Yeah, absolutely, of yes. course. Yes. Yeah, it's, 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 the, it's the king's daughter. We've met her. Yeah. Fantastic. No introductions are necessary then. I will leave you to it. Please enjoy your snacks. <laughs> Access nods and walks out the door and closes the door behind him. But, Access, uh, uh, before you go, um, in the regards to the uh, the previous experiment, would there be anything else that would be helpful for us to know uh, about... Uh, our current history with the elves that we haven't already discussed? Or the previous in experiment? Uh, the, the one in which you treat us as if we know nothing. Oh, of course. Uh, I am not sure what you have discussed or not discussed. I have been out of this room for most of the meeting. No, no, if you what could you discuss with us? Oh, out of the things I have discussed with you. Yes. Yep. Yep. Uh, you... We'll need to then know that the elves are fleeing capricious archfey, that they have sought asylum, and they have been given 100 years in which to settle on these lands until we find them a new place. Sinmara is confident that she can get the portal working to help them find a plane that they can call their own. If we don't find a plane for them or get the portal working in 100 years, what will happen to them will have to, to accept the next place that we open on. 100 years is the time that we have allocated that they may stay on our lands until we find a place that is suitable for them. Ah, yes. Invasions as well with the hill giants to, uh, you know, make it very smooth for them to move out of the area. Any kind of uh, gifts we could bring or way to communicate with them or... Hmm. Hill giants like food. If you could present them with a particular uh, particular cuisine or, or rare delicacy to their chief, I think that would be well received. Treat them with respect. If I may be so bold, I think that soul giants are often looked down upon by the other giant clans. It makes them rather mad. Would you recommend a delicacy for us? I am sorry. That is not something that I am programmed to assist with. Shall I fetch a culinary droid? Oh. Uh, if you could maybe just ask them in passing and then report back to us. <laughs> Claire, I can see you nodding emphatically. <laughs> yeah. Yes, just whispering, <laughs> I want a culinary droid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We take a culinary droid with us, actually. Maybe that would be beneficial. I believe the culinary yes, droids yes. of King Mion's castle will pale in comparison to the culinary droids the hill giants already possess. That is, after all, an area they provide a lot of financial uh, investment in. Hmm. Are there any ingredients that we could bring them that uh, they might not have otherwise? Yes, perhaps you could bring them a rare ingredient. I believe that mammoth meat is seen as a rather rare delicacy. If you could perhaps convince one of the ice giant clans to allow you to hunt their mammoths far to the north and bring it down to the hill giants, that could potentially be a wonderful gift. Ah. But you may course. not have much luck. The ice giants guard their mammoth herds jealously. If you don't mind me saying, sir, as he looks towards you, Crassus. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, we are very um, protective of our uh, wandering herds of mammoths that I have seen with my own eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and I look sheepishly around the room. Yes, yes. tell us more about these mammoths. I don't think I've heard you speak about them before. What do they look like? That's a good point. I don't think mammoths exist on an uh, ocean. No, 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 no. Ma uh, no. Mammoth, uh, yes, you've never they, heard this um, word before. It does I'm just gonna memory now. Oh, do I have a flashback like an echo thing? Oh, doesn't doesn't seem like there's any. <laughs> I'm just gonna seem like there's any gonna... connection. <laughs> any. I think I'm gonna go latch on the first thing I see. I look down at myself, see a bunch of firm. Go, yeah. oh, yes, lots of firm. That's yep. all I'm gonna say because I can't give any more descriptors. As you begin touching the very silky soft fur, it does appear to be. Crassus, as you think about this, this must be a massive animal for this fur to be able to wrap around you and be tied up. And the fur itself is this brown, very thick, woolly covering. And in fact, as you look a bit closer, you can see that the um, 
the joins, the buttons that are almost like loops of small bone, at first what you thought were bone, that hold the various tabs together, actually look to be some sort of tusk, carved and decorated. Yes, they are very big creatures with fur. Tusks as well, from what I can gather, but... I look at um, Niles, because I knew he was trying to get me into a trap. Why are you showing so much interest in our mammoth herd? Hmm. No reason. Well, keep it that way. <laughs> I just, <laughs> I, I like to think, I like to think almost that like that Trying jealousy of the, the ice giant is almost seeping in a little bit. Like mm. these are our oh, friends, don't yeah. touch them. That was, um, I shake it off a little bit and I can just continue. Well, what is the next step? Is the droid still there? The next step. I, Access is standing there waiting for further commands. The last thing he said to him was, no, stop, wait. That was the last instruction he oh. was given. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, what, what is the next step? The next step? Yes, what, what are we doing next? Are, I, we, are we just waiting for the Matrix and um, oh, we Princess Samari? Samari. Uh, once you yes. have made a decision on the lands that you are willing to allocate to the elves, then uh, if you wait here... Uh, Translation Matrix will be along shortly. Sin Mari will be as well. And you will travel down to the Elven encampment on the outskirts of the city. Well, I don't want, I don't want to speak for all of us, but I think we've come to a destination that we have chosen. I must advise you to take all advice that this unit has provided with uh, real-world applications. I am able to calculate based on mathematical certainty alone. It is important to count your feelings as part of your decision-making process. Your ability to reason and not reason is a vital part of your decision-making process as organic life forms. Well, I mean, I, we, we think we have a decision. After you go, we're probably going to argue a little bit more. Wonderful. You know, I am only able to act rationally. It is important that irrationality is included in this decision-making process. We have been here for three hours already, so might be another three hours more before we come up with a decision. Should I maybe store the translation matrix and Sinmari? Stall? Tell them to wait if you are not ready to make a decision. Are we expected to see Sinmari at a set time? She is on her way now. I had spoken with her on the way to let her know that you had reached a decision. Oh, I think you'll be okay. I think, Access, I think you've done what we need. Thank you so much for coming. Please proceed with whatever you have planned. We shall confer for a bit longer and wait for our uh, Sigmare and the the map. Of course. Oh, you watch as he kind of like stumbles forward about to walk out the door and then steps and opens the door wider. A hovering ball, probably about 20 feet across, made of these interlocking gears of what looks to be, again, this electrum copper and bronze with a single glowing pulsing crystal at the centre glass spirals all around it and sections slowly crackling with this very light blue electricity hovers into the room. Ah, your translation matrix is here. Wonderful. Perfect. Thank you so much. Of course. He nods, bows, and walks out of the room. The sphere hovers in place, unmoving. Okay, now that he's gone, we can speak a bit more candidly. Yeah. So... Before we Opinions. go candidly, uh, sorry, just before we go candid, um, and then she turns to the translation matrix and asks it if it is a sentient matrix. <laughs> the sphere does not respond. Or, or if it's... Repo- sphere, are you reporting back to anyone? The sphere does not respond. Okay, we should be safe, guys. I think it, I think it really just exists. Foolproof. For- <laughs> we shall ask. <laughs> <laughs> In trust. Yeah. We shall not receive an answer, but that shall be an answer in of itself. <laughs> yeah, the sphere does not respond. Also, Niles, I apologize for having the gold you before. Do not do not know what came over me. Oh no no, it's all it's all it's all fine. I'm. Uh... It's really not. This is really not fine. This is not. Yeah, fine. I'm, right. I'm kind of freaking out. I'm kind of freaking out. I've my ears, and um, um, this body is really really big. And <laughs> yeah, Ember and Harry, the two of you, you've never oh. experienced this before. This, this, the this rest of these. Time. Second time yeah, time Harry. Second time oh, it is second time of Harry. Sorry, Ember. Yeah. yeah. Like, these people seem very cool. 
with this. Almost a little bit familiar in a way. You've never experienced this before. I mean, you've got no idea what's going on. You say familiar, but Niles is still like all over the yeah. place. Like he's walking around, he's just like, oh, like kind of just his head's all like, oh. Like they, this lot seem to know stuff you don't like. Talking about time travel and things like that. Oh yeah, we probably should explain ourselves, right? So, um, we, we I like we Simon's slow nudges. Then, <laughs> <laughs> we, yeah, we, you should. We, <laughs> That'd be swell. <laughs> well, yeah. Look, okay, so. The running theory we have is that occasionally, because of the because uh, of the stones in our arm, in our hands, um, our consciousness is just is nothing big. It's just our consciousness pulled out of our bodies and back in time and put into the heads of giants. It makes a lot of sense when you put it that way. We just yeah, seem to have been on bodies when we come still back. somewhere else. Well, we don't know. Um, our minds are here, obviously, but I mean, like, last time this happened, I we we woke up and not much time had passed. We we're still standing in the same room, and like no one had like you know passed out for not drinking or eating or anything. So, um, and last time you were here, did you have that vacuum noise every time someone would say something? I couldn't quite hear when yeah, you know well, he was trying to speak the rooms or anything. <laughs> I'll be honest, last time we were here, I had a big mental breakdown, so I don't remember much. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Um, we will see. It, it's, it's, yeah. We have a lot of questions. We're not sure if we're like voluntarily inhabiting these bodies or if their soul is gone during the duration um <clears throat> there's a lot or even if we travel back in time or we're just living people's memories ah well that the yeah the, the, the thing is, is is if we were living people's memories our bumbling and and fuckery and messing around seems to like do something so you know it's it's i think we might be changing things which is a little scary have you done anything oh, to change saving time? Oh, the portal! I get it now. Why do yes. I get it? <laughs> Not that we're aware of, Ember, but sometimes we say things and we don't know if they're going to have ramifications or not. Look at this way. I think we already discussed this before. What we do here plays a part in the future and that is what we are... That, that, that future is what we experience, experience in the present. So what we do here will probably seem quite natural to us when we get back to the pleasant. That's right. So I think we just have to live through this memory together and um, see what happens moving forward. I would also just be very careful with your wording and with your questions. You don't want to give the wrong person an idea that could come back in the future to cause a problem. Like, don't mention the machines, for example, the robots. I, I made the mistake of that, and I think I've got it in King Bjorn's head that that might be a good idea. Hmm. Very, well, it depends. Very, very... Maybe those robots are already in, in existence, though. Look at the technology Maybe... they have at their disposal. I mean, we know we know that the hill giants have some sort of degree of technology in their disposal. They have culinary droids. That's rather interesting. Also, is have it, you? Is this what it's like to have teeth? <laughs> I knew this was coming. <laughs> yes. Yes, yeah, be careful. Right. Do, not, do not bite your tongue, though. It's don't like a beak, but that. inside my mouth. Oh. And, and, and you'll, you'll need to clean them. Oh. Okay. Slip and wet. It's oh, and wet. Very odd. <clears throat> I'm suddenly really aware of my teeth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's a polite knock at the door, and as the door slowly opens, you see a younger storm giant woman she looks to probably be in her early 20s maybe white hair braided into this uh, long braid very similar to the other storm giants in the room um that drapes over her shoulder again dressed in very similar long flowing robes to the other storm giants um but around her hand is what looks to be i can only really describe this as a gauntlet of some sorts but rather than being made of interlocking plates of metal it's made of many many sections 
of gears and electrum wiring and crystals forming this lattice work that stretches from her fingers across her hand and up onto her forearm. In the center of her forearm is what looks to be like a gray slate, similar to the one that you can see on the table in the center of the room that's displaying the illusionary map of the world. Hers isn't lit up and doesn't appear to be um, displaying anything at the moment, but as she leans in and looks around, she goes, um, hello, I, I wanted to see if you were ready to go down and talk to the elves. Um, oh, it's good to see you all again. How, how have you gone? Have you found a location to, to allocate for the elves? I think we have, yes. Yeah. Wonderful. I, I'm surprised you all came to a decision so quickly when my father uh, spoke to me before uh, when we organized this, this meeting and we heard the hill giants were not attending. I was concerned it would take us many months to reach a decision, but you have you have come to a conclusion so so quickly. <laughs> it's, uh, it is so wonderful. I think it's precisely because the hill giants were not in attendance. Um, they weren't here to uh, object. Or, or, you know, stop for breaks every five minutes. You watch as a almost disappointed frown crosses her face just for a moment and she nods and goes ah so you have decided to allocate them some of the hill giant land it might you be disprove well, uh, uh, no, sorry, no. Do, do. it is I'm not my place to comment no, no. inside check I... if i can yeah uh not very good <laughs> I don't what were you think. saying michael uh, no. What were you saying, Michael? Oh, so I, I just wanted a sanity check just to see what we were talking about because you mentioned that um, the area which is now <clears throat> now Oxenford yeah. um, wasn't part of the Hill Giant territory, or it was? It was, yeah, yeah. Is, oh, okay, okay, there we go. Right. But, the, but um, according to Access's calculations, uh, if the land was to be taken away and given to the elves for 100 years, it's unlikely that there would be um, any... Uh, impact on the hill giant's ability to have food was the specific thing he calculated for that question because <laughs> that's what you've been talking about previously um niles 14 for insight harry that's a 10 <laughs> harry for some reason uh, you just, just i just you got no idea maybe it's like something something a hill giant? she seems no 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 <laughs> it, you know what a hill giant is it's more like so you don't pick up anything from her body language she just when she says oh no it's not my place you're like oh yeah it's probably not Fair. Yeah, uh, she she has a voice. Yeah, Niles. Some yeah, there's she she definitely disapproves, and more so she seems almost a little bit not scared, but there's definitely something holding her back from speaking out in opposition to you and your decisions. There's there's something there, like she wants to, but there's something holding her back. Speak plainly. Oh, I, it is not. It is not my place. <laughs> I'm oh, sorry. No, no. I'm, I'm sure no, we're, we're all friends here. We value. A look your of opinion. abject confusion crosses her face as you say the words. <laughs> we're all friends here, <laughs> gesturing around the room. Okay, <laughs> we're all acquaintances then. <laughs> do, you adjust, do you adjust to that? Do you? Yes. <laughs> There's another look of very strong confusion. This one does not speak for all of us. Douglas. Um, thought I knew you better. <laughs> uh, your, your input uh, are is you, Are you uh, worried that valued. this would cause... You go, you go, Ali, then you go, Dave. Your, your input is valued, um, you know, as a member of the giant race. I mean, there are very possibly things that we have overlooked or... Uh, are more significant uh, that we think may not be significant, but are in the grand scheme of things. Uh, more opinions is always welcome. And what were you going to say, Harry? Are you are you worried that this might cause conflict with the Hill Giants? Is that something? Um, you can see there's this internal struggle before she steps in and closes the door behind her, gives a bit of a glance at the uh, Matrix, and then goes, cease functions immediately. The matrix goes silent and then slowly lowers to the floor. Oops. 
<laughs> Dave also sees functions as well. What was that? Sorry. Dave uh, disconnected. Dave also sees. He's oh, also okay. sees function. Yeah, Dave also sees <laughs> function. Um, he'll be back. He always comes crawling back. Um, <laughs> there, is. there is. Sinmare sort of like pauses for a second. I'm just surprised. I tried to ask for a seat on this council to give my opinions, uh, at least just to be a, a, an expert witness as the one who created the portal technology that brought the elves here, the one who had been contacting them, the one who had organized all of this, and my application was rejected three times. Why Why now? Why is it different? Why do you want to hear what I have to say? I slept on it. You, you slept on it? You've only been yes. talking yes, to you know, for a few hours. We need some fresh eyes on this on the topic. You were uh you were you were like a shortlisted and you you know, you were like going to be like the next, but like you weren't quite there. So like now you're like the swing vote, I think May that's I ask what they say. Who 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 was important and knowledgeable enough to speak before me? Um uh, uh, no, this is really struggling. <laughs> she <laughs> she like, sort of up? pauses, realizes she's potentially overstepped. Yes. Please forgive me. I I I I. No, it's okay. That. Let's now uh, let our friend here speak. Oh, I heard that. <laughs> As you I say, Niles. I, I brought it back real quick. I didn't yeah, say Niles. Say I said no. She sort of like pauses for a second, but doesn't question it. Um, it's because I caught it, so it was yeah. not so too bad. That's my nickname. But no, I want to I want to hear our friend speak. Please answer her question. I'm getting you back for the mammoth. Yes, I, I do have concerns. The hill giants, a lot of the area that they they use isn't just for food. I, it is such a, 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 a wrong way to look at them as just gluttonous monsters. Like a number of these sites have great cultural significance for them as well. Places where their ancestors are, are buried or where great deeds were accomplished. Like these are places that they hold dear to their hearts. No, they don't build giant temples on these sites or mark them, but they leave the natural world as it was to remember the event that is worth remembering. They keep the place as it was. And I think that is something that is horribly overlooked by the rest of this council, if you don't mind me saying. No, I believe you might be correct. Um... Is there a alternative location that uh, would maybe be suitable for all parties? Uh... One of the other clans will have to give up land. One of your clans. I do not think the elves could live in my land. They couldn't handle the... Uh... Well, I heard ice, so I go with the ice. The ice. <laughs> Your land is That's what I heard. just ice frozen tundra. You have fertile lands across the, the edges of the volcanic wastes. I, that All that ash is perfect fertilizer. You ice giants, you, you have such a... Uh, such a protective view. All of you, in fact, not just the ice giants. All of you have such a, a, a short-sighted protective view of your borders. And you're just going to carve up territory that is not your own to, to give to others? Or if it was, I would, I would, I would like to offer up the cloud giant lands, but I don't think you or father would be that keen. Are you joking? Being a cloud giant as well. We are not. We are not cloud giants. We are storm giants. Oh, that's what I meant. Sorry. <laughs> I <also> forgot. <laughs> I forgot. Um. Right. You f- Anyway. Actually- Sorry, it's been a long day. I'm good at it. You've only been It was a big three hours. I've been argument, that's a long time. Okay, Sinmari- Not your giants there, it's nothing. Yeah. I- You know, I think I see your point. Maybe we are going about this wrong. Maybe we're thinking- Trying to think of a single location to send all of the elves. Perhaps it would be a better impact if we- move them to multiple locations, Get, perhaps set up two or three different areas where they could begin from, and then sort of gave them the choice of areas to go to, and then they could both 
that means that we could balance the um, the cost of the for the of the different clans, the giants, and also it means that we would give them some kind of agency over where they went. I am pleased you're finally asking to speak to the elves about this. Uh, you need to speak to them to understand what they want and what they need. I, as I understand it, I am the only person so far who has spoken in any official capacity to the representatives of the elves that have come through. Well, then what are why, we waiting why, for? Why don't we go and speak to them? <laughs> why don't we? Yes, let's let us. Can I ask that you listen to what they have to say? I know they are small and that they are tiny, minuscule compared to us. But they have so much to give. Please. I take it that not many giants hold the same outlook as you do. I think for the most part, the giants are bemused and concerned at my actions, bringing the elves here, offering them asylum. I've heard many say it is not our responsibility. Why would we help people who are not our own? Because it is the right thing to do. Concerned about the Fae that, um, I, I know that you, they were all scanned when they came through, but there's no other way for the Fae from the other plane to come here, is there? Either using them as conduits or... Not without my portal. ...them open portals themselves. No, I, I don't believe so. I think the, the <clears throat> way that Anam created this world, it was isolated, uh, somewhere far away from the others, but our technology has been able to, to break down the walls and allow us to reach out to these other locations. I don't, I am not sure, is the short answer. And making new land, uh, you know, new floating islands or islands in across the ocean, um, we don't have the technology for that, do we? Yes, of course we do. It's just very costly and to keep them maintained and functioning requires a, a lot of energy, magical energy. Uh, pulled from the elements, the elemental planes. And the cloud giants uh, have been guarding the formula required to funnel large amounts of energy to, to lift massive land masses for some time. I think Ellie's muted? No, just the, um, no. Just the noise gate caught you there for that last bit, Ellie. Uh. I think you're probably correct. I mean, yes, I is this is an odd question, but in your experience and from what you've observed, is there a catalyst uh, about why all of the different races are so protective about what is theirs? The clans. Hmm. Because of the ever war, of course. Ah, uh, yes, the Ever War. Um, terrible thing, that. She, like, looks at you as if, like, well, that's an understatement, and nods. <laughs> <laughs> Have you explained that to the elves as well, about uh, that's why it's so hard to find a place so far, or...? Not yet. It is hard to sum up hundreds of thousands of years of giant history in a, in a short story. <laughs> it is why the tale of the Ever War takes three days to tell. Going to need to work on that for when we talk to the elves. I don't think we need to tell them why. And ah. to be honest, I think that we have so moved past those troubling times that using it as an excuse is rather backwards now. It's just an excuse to hold on to things that you already have and to try and take more. I like you. Thank you. That's very kind of you to say. Well, I think the next thing to do then is to get this audience with the elves. They're waiting. I can take you to the representatives right now. What do we think? Okay. Sure, this sounds like a plan. I think we go with it and see where it, where it goes. Brilliant. I'll just power up the translation matrix and you will come with me. Yeah? Yeah. 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 Great. Uh, yeah. Activate all functions, primary and non-essential. 
the sphere slowly spins, rising up, hovering. Ooh. Follow, please. The sphere then slowly turns and then moves around behind her. Great, if you could all accompany me. Uh, those maps you have there, are they for the elves? They are? Yes, we thought they could be beneficial. That is, that is good. Very good. I am pleased that you are bringing something to give to them. Wonderful. Uh, please, uh, if I may accompany you. Oh, yes. And, and, also, and Tetra will also pick up that giant platter of food. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wonderful. Uh, please follow me. And with that, Sinmare leads you out through the double doors. As you step into, and, and out of this room and into a massive antechamber, you can see the ceiling would have to be 200 feet off the ground. This chamber is enormous. Stone vaulted pillars rising high on either side and above a beautiful glass ceiling showing the sky above. As Sinmare leads you out through this hallway and down a set of stairs and then out through a set of massive double doors, you step out onto a large open area. Around you, you can see the walls of a castle, but far below you is empty air. You are on some sort of flying castle. It looks very similar for those of you who have seen the storm wall, the massive flying castle that the storm giants uh, brought back in when the uh, uh, storm, storms were out. Sorry, the storms were out when the giants came back into Nostea, the massive, massive castle the storm giants were residing in. Sinmare leads you down to what can only be described as a longboat, a massive wooden structure. But rather than having a sail in the center, two large sails splinter out from either side, forming what almost look like wings, aligned vertically to catch the air. And at the back, you can see a large blue crystal, ice and wind swirling around it as it hovers in place. Energy, these motes of almost like rings of light pulsing out from underneath these large crystal engines beneath the ship. As Sinmare walks down the gangplank and steps onto the ship, you can see the pilots of this particular vessel. Uh, another frost giant gives you a nod and calls out, Raise anchor! As the ship begins to disconnect from the Sky Castle. Uh, you watch as the longboat begins rising up, and as it flies over the top of the Storm's Redoubt, you see King Yon rushing out onto the balcony, squinting as he sees Sinmare having a bit of a double take and then reaching down to his wrist. You hear from her wrist piece, boom, 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 as these lights begin to flicker up on the uh, slate screen. Sinmari looks down, swipes, and the screen goes black. <laughs> Ooh. Can any of us notice that? I, all of you do. That's why I described it. <laughs> all of you see this. Are, uh, okay. Is there any particular reason that you hung up on him? What? Hang up on him. Uh, you rejected the call. What? The boop boop boop. Rejected the call. The contact. Wait, would we even know it was a call? Yeah. We would have no you, idea. You would not know those languages. Yeah. <laughs> you don't, no. We would have no idea. There's what no happened. context for this for you guys. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> um, what was that sound that just came from your list? Uh, my device uh, sometimes uh, alerts me to certain changes uh, in my uh, work. Mm. Interesting. Hmm. If you don't mind me asking, I do is a it, lot is of. Is it powered by? Oh, is this powered by uh, elemental magic? Uh, the the primal sources, it's... the planes of the four elements: fire, water, earth, and air. Could you make me one? A central power source at all? Like, uh, or is it just sort of the the elements in the air? Oh, no. Um. Yes, I could make you one. Um, if if you would like one, I, I could I could work on one for you. I, I'm just surprised. I, every time I've tried to show these to other elements of the council, I've been told that they are a, a, a waste of resources and, and uh, uh, useless. I just I'm sorry. I'm just it's very. You must have had a good sleep to <laughs> change your mind so also quickly. We've had a very productive afternoon. Also, but, but before we began, we did some really, really rigor like rigorous, like team building exercises. <clears throat> uh, and it just put us in, the, in a very good frame of mind. 
Might I suggest you do them for all future council meetings and, and convince each of your clan leaders to do the same? I know my father struggles to get any any progress with the council. The, the old thing has stalled for the last two decades. If this team building, team building exercises, as you call it, have helped, please, if you could teach them to your to your leaders, to your Yars, to your Reeves, to your chancellors, that would be wonderful. It shouldn't be hard. It's just a lot of like, trust falls and like opening up emotionally. As you say, opening up emotionally, she looks towards the stone giant, then at the frost giant, back to the stone giant, back at the frost giant, and then looks back <laughs> at you. <laughs> looks back at you, Tetra. It took us some time, but we got there. Why? Why do you keep staring at me? <laughs> I just wasn't aware frost giants uh, discussed emotion. <laughs> she looks down at the slate. Yet again, yet again, this one does not speak for all of us. So the stone giants are actually hot on the outside, but we're, we're, we're big softies on the inside. I, I have to say, if you don't mind me asking, um, I, I'm surprised that one of your clan agreed to come. Normally, the, the, the upper lands are seen as, uh, as just part of the great dream. Normally, you, you people don't get too involved in in the affairs of the surface. Why did you come? Who, who, who's she talking to? You, Dave. <laughs> I thought she was a stone giant as well, wasn't she? No, 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 Storm. No, no, she's Storm. Storm, storm I'm just heard. Fucked up before. She's definitely a storm giant. Oh. <laughs> well, like, um. Well. Uh, look, not everyone agreed. Um. And. Well. <clears throat> um. Yeah, look, a few of us, I, I may not have the voice of every stone giant down there, but um, a few of us do believe that we need to see what's going on up here and be more involved if we want to be accepted and have wow. a, a seat at the table, which is why which is why it's a bit upsetting that the hill giants didn't come either. In indeed. Uh, very well. Oh, apologies. I yeah, um, to... not not every sun giant agrees with me. Just just for the record, so. Ah, uh, very well. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't answer your question before. Um, the the crystals we we charge them and pair them with one of the elemental planes, um, rubies to fire, emeralds to earth, sapphires to water, <coughs> and um, amber to. No, sorry, topaz, topaz to air. Um, and when we channel the elements through them... Oh, this music's way too upbeat. <laughs> way too upbeat. No I, just thought, I just thought it was like Dave being like, yes, no. I have a seat at the table. This is way old too upbeat. music's no, just no, no, coming no, no. in. I'm good. like, wow, that's, that's inspirational, man. I don't know if we're shooting ourselves in the foot, guys. That's better. That was we're way too upbeat. You've already was like, done it. Was like hopeful. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, no, we... we Pair them at the uh, the four elemental rifts. The rifts. And how is this done? Uh, how does the pairing process work? I mean, it is quite fascinating. We channel the raw energy uh, emerging through the rifts uh, into the gemstones and and uh, fill them with the the light of each of the elemental planes. The rifts yes, were. But how? I mean. Do we just stand there with a crystal and just go, oh, It is dangerous to stand. Like, you know, a device. It's very dangerous to stand too close to them. No, uh, electron wiring was uh, was devised and has been the safest way so far. The, the rifts were what inspired me to uh, create the portals. I mean, these are, in a way, portals themselves, the rifts, naturally occurring. Hmm. This technology hasn't been used to put uh, beings in, also inside gems, has it? Beings inside gems? No, I... I had a horrible dream uh, about getting stuck in one. Oh, no, that, that sounds awful. No, I've, I've never heard of any magic that would do that. That sounds horrific. It does while, sound horrific. Let's think it that way. While she's talking with you, Crassus, the frost giant who's manning this longship steps up towards you, kind of gives you a bit of a nod towards the back of the ship and then walks back to the helm. Do you follow? 
So he so he nods to the back of the ship and then Come, goes comes down towards you, gives you a very pointed look, gestures with his head towards the helm, and then wanders back oh. and, and stands at the helm. I do the slightest nod, and then while everyone's sort of engrossed in conversation, I sort of slip away to go to that area. Brilliant. As you step up onto the deck next to the frost giant, um, you can see that this is a much older giant. Um, if it was in human years, he looks like he's in his 60s. Double braided beard, multiple large spiraling tattoos, a uh, dark blue woad across his skin. Uh, and you can see that his breath steams in the air in front of him. Welcome back, Lord. How are the talks going? Good to see you again, my friend. It's, um, the talks have been a lot more productive this time. Very quick in hindsight. No frost giant lands being given up, I hope. Not currently. I did look after our interests. Of course you did. Of course. So what do you think of this lot, goes... then? Uh, this lot. being as stuffy as normal. <laughs> well, uh, well, I would just say that it seems even though this council has been together for so long, everyone is finding their place, even today. I say, I'm a bit surprised that Mion's daughter is on board. Yes, that Princess. surprised me too. She have any More place the, in these um, talks? I think she will. I think at the moment she's sort of acting as a bit of an advisor. So. She seems to have a bit of a rapport, so we'll see what she knows. <clears throat> Take it as well. it comes. You know best. Just let me know when we can return to the beautiful, windswept lands of our homeland. Sorry. All that I long for. How have the um how has how has things been going on here while I've been gone? Boring as normal, no changes, nothing interesting. Fire Giant came up and commented on the quality of the wood Had to get him to back off before he placed his hand <laughs> on the uh, side and damaged it. Uh, they do not know, they don't understand the connection we have. Oh, I think he knew what he was doing. Well, you did right in sending him away. Tell me, what do you look forward to most in our lands? I think my fjord. A long stretch of coastline back into the hills beyond. Beautiful ice. Coating sides. Snow and the frost high above. I think that is what I miss. Sort of, I sort of nod. I sort of place my hand on his shoulder. It's okay, you should be back there. And yet again, we can enjoy the maj majesty of our land. Hopefully in peace, as I look towards some of the other giants. He gives a well, bit of a sly eye, yeah. nods slowly. I also feel like, I don't know how war-like the Frost Giants are. You don't know. If they are, if you they are, oh, yeah, I don't know. I just, yeah, yeah, you don't know. Because I was thinking like, yeah, maybe like he might see me saying peace. I want to see his reaction to it. Does he have a smirk come across his face or does he take that at like Seems face to value? nod. Yeah, doesn't doesn't seem to yeah just just nods. Okay, doesn't, doesn't that's cool. Seem... I'm just sort of gauging. <laughs> Pointing for the fjords. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Amazing, good Monty Python Red reference. <laughs> Hello, Polly. <laughs> for those of you who don't get that reference, uh, Monty Python. <laughs> if you search Monty Python parrot sketch on YouTube, you'll find it. It's brilliant. Mm -hmm. yes. One of my yeah. favorite John Cleese rants. Yeah. Uh, brilliant. Nice Cheese shop. The cheese shop. <laughs> <laughs> the ship begins heading down towards the edge of what can only be described as a sprawling city. Almost as you stare at the lands below, you can make out what will once be Palin. The massive archway in the center, this giant gateway, is in the process of being built. Whereas in Palin, Ooh. you've seen it partially, partially ruined, not, not fully intact. Um, the hills around that sort of frame the valley of the river that passes through the city is still there. You can see the giant city as well. Almost looks like 
the city of Palin was built on top of this giant city as it stands now. The, the giant city doesn't is, is nowhere near as sprawling as Palin. In fact, a lot of the city itself includes verticality. There are large sections of buildings that hover slightly above the ground uh, or quite a high distance above the ground. And you can see what almost look to be um, like freestanding sections of metal that slowly rise and fall, transporting mm. giants up to and from these buildings. Around the edge of the city on the southern excuse me, on the southern side, you can see what look to be hundreds of tents set up around the edge of the river. You can see banners flying and what look to be tiny specks moving amongst the tents. As the ship gets closer and comes to land, you can see these tiny people, maybe only like six feet tall at most, scurrying around through these tents. I mean, with one footstep, you could crush two or three of these tents easily. And then there's this sudden moment for all of you where you almost, your personality reasserts itself and your perspective shifts again and you realize like, these are these are the elves, these are the people. Like, there's this moment of almost thinking what your giant echoes would be thinking that you suddenly sort of jerk back out of in that moment. Mm. As the long ship lands and the gangplank is put down, you begin stepping down a group of elves begin marching out through the front of this city of tents. At their head is a woman, long willowy limbs, beautiful blonde golden hair, and a crown made of what looked to be woven leaves and twigs atop her head. At her side stands a younger man, elven as well, but with dark brown hair, slightly... Um, copperish tan skin uh, and a similar crown made of leaves around his head as well but much smaller than hers a number of guards and other elves stand at their side you can almost see hints of what the elves might become in nostea one day these look almost a little bit like almost like uh like young high, uh, young um, high elves is the best way to describe it. Those incredibly long ears that the high elves now have, the, um, the coppery woodland appearance of the wood elves, none of that's present yet, but there's hints of it, of what they become later. Proto -elves. Yeah, proto-elves, exactly. Uh, and as as the, the group of you begin wandering up with Sinmari and the translation matrix, the elves wander up as well. Um, at their front, what can be described as their queen or matriarch, raises a single hand in salute and then bows incredibly deeply, the rest of her group doing the same. As she begins speaking, her voice sounds almost musical and lyrical, but you don't understand what she's saying until Sinmari quickly turns towards this sphere and goes, translate active language, giant elvish now. The sphere pulses and then suddenly the language shifts and she's suddenly speaking, intelligent, uh, speaking intelligibly once again, the, the elven woman. Thank you for your help in getting us out of the Feywilds. Our people are eternally grateful to you and all your kin. Tell me, how may we, how may we assist you? How may we serve you? Sinmare nods. No, it, it is fine. Uh, we are here to ask some questions. The other members of our committee would like to ask you about your needs, your requirements. There's a sort of stunned look across the elves as the queen looks confused and then a big beaming smile crosses her face. Please, it would be a an honor. She looks up towards all of you, not really knowing who to address to, to speak to at first. Does anyone speak? Um... Hello. <laughs> Greetings. Yes. We want to meet you. Um, we should be conducting some talks today. <laughs> Having a chat about, I guess, areas where you could be put. Indeed. We have some ideas. But we wanted to make sure that our final decision took into account uh, our needs as well as yours. 
but it's definitely yours since you'll be the people who actually know living there. She nods. Um, I am Astarian. Um, this is my consort, Philavandrel. I was going to say, do we recognize this name? Now I wouldn't, but do we? Re- anyone else recognize this name? Uh, if oh, anyone I wants didn't. to make a history check using their character stats, they may do so. Stats or giant stats? You mean giant stats or you mean... No, like, your, your, original? your original character stats. <clears throat> Is this oh. a history check? Oh, history sweet. check. Okay, I'll do that. Yeah, I'll do it. Uh, I might as well do no, it. No, wait, no, I won't. Yeah, he's a merchant. He usually knows a few things, but that's he a two. So he does so. not. <laughs> Man, he speaks seven. Elvish. He speaks Elvish, but uh, I rolled a seven, and I thought I did bad. Alrighty. Um, oh, Nars doesn't know shit either. So <laughs> no, we're not doing that crash shot. That's yeah, not not amazing rolls. So that's a thirteen for Crassus, two for Harry. Harry, you got no fucking idea. Niles, four, no fucking idea. Uh, Crassus I and Ember. Language. Crassus 13, Ember 16. Um, Crassus, the name Astarian. There's something about that name. It sounds incredibly familiar. You're not sure why, though. There's something about that name that... Yeah, you recognize Which one's it. Astarian real quick? Uh, the Queen. She introduced herself as Astarian okay, cool. and then her I'll consort, Philip Um Would Ember. you actually write their name, sorry? Just quickly yeah, I'll check them in chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here you go, check them in chat for you. Um, it be easier. There you go. Enjoy. Um, Ember, you remember a tale of the first queen of the elves, Astarian, the one who led the elves to freedom against the Archfey, uh, led, led them in rebellion against the Archfey and then to freedom through the, like, to freedom in Nostea. Not really much more than that, even with the 16. But yeah, first queen of the elves. Um, please, if you had any uh, questions, I can give you a, a basic overview. The perfect lands for us would be lands of wilderness, um, forests, trees, woodlands, rivers, streams, mountains. We Anywhere where there is much natural beauty, the elves would be most, most comfortable. <coughs> Is there anything that we would be best to avoid? Uh, I'm not sure if you, uh, you if you can fly or if you uh, don't fly or um, some of our well, spellcasters. you can see in the dark. Some of our spellcasters can uh, allow us to fly for moments using magic, and uh, yes, we can. We'll, we'll see quite well in the dark. All elves can see very well in the dark. What about them? Um, and and not that we're coming from our our own backgrounds, but do you have elemental preferences? Say cold, heat, or you know, air, ground, things along those lines. Um, or storms, <clears throat> N- nature and water. Um, Some what I'm gathering more templates, sort of forest. Templates, sort of yes. Biomes. Yes, absolutely. Hmm. And how how would you feel if your people had to be split into two different camps? You if we watch couldn't as you all in one place. You watch as her consort Philavandral almost tenses for a moment. You watch as Astarian notices this, places a hand on his shoulder. The elves have decided that we will remain as one people. We hmm. were divided and pitted against each other by the Archfey for generations. Now we are united for the first time, maybe ever in our history. Uh, we would like to stay that way. Mm. <sighs> um, is there anything that you would like us to take into consideration other than, you know, what we've already asked and you have already answered? No, no. The, any any sanctuary you can offer us is, is well appreciated and... No, no, see, it's helpful information, like um, how the, we now know that you guys don't wish to be separated. Um, that uh, it is, there are many things that we are uh, concerned that we might overlook accidentally. Um, the more information you can give us, the better. We, we are quite 
we have a number of craftsmen and craftswomen amongst our people who are gifted with stonework, maybe somewhere near uh, good lands for, for mining stone metals, uh, things like that that we can use to rebuild and to, to create more permanent housing for our people. Safer housing would be much appreciated. Ah, is there something that is uh, troubling you in your current location? Uh, just I'm not meaning this in a rude way, just, you know, for your no, safety's no, no. sake. Just that tents and canvas are a, a poor protector, protector from the elements. We, we, can, we can make more, we can do more, we can be more. Funny, Ali, I think the, uh, I think the noise gate is aggressive. Too far away from Mike. <laughs> for, did you say that? Did you say that out loud for a hundred years? Uh, I said under my breath. <laughs> cool. Ember, did you have anything you wanted to add in, or any questions you might ask? Particularly no. Um, Fair enough. As the only representative of the fire giants, <laughs> they they look towards you and go, "We are not great with uh, with extreme temperature, either way." <laughs> I figured as much. It's, uh, don't get too close to the fire; you might get burnt. Indeed. <laughs> it is okay. We both do not do well with the uh, more hotter temperatures. It seems. Um, a, a starian was it? Yes. Uh, I, I would be curious to know. I, I understand that you were fleeing the the fav the Feywilds, was it? Um, yes. Tell us, if you don't mind, a little bit more about where you have come from. What what sort of world have you left? And is that something? Is that is that where where you have come from? Is that something you would wish to find yourself? We, I suppose, in, in terms of an environment, is that somewhere you, where you would like to go? Our people have been captives of the Archfey for more generations than we can count. We know we didn't come from their world originally. We are not like other Fey creatures, but our time there has changed us in some ways. We think our our magic, our connection to the uh, the weave, as it were shaped by our time in the Feywilds. Whatever world we once came from, we do not know. The Archfey often spoke that we had been taken and bred as the perfect slaves, the perfect servants for them in the Feywilds. The, the unseely court in particular can be rather cruel in their machinations. We do not know which world we came from. We did... That, that is lost to us. Whether we are all from one world or whether we were taken from many and have slowly become one people, we do not know. It is lost to us now. But we have been playthings of the Archfey for uh, many generations. Time is different there. <clears throat> Very different. Is, if you don't mind me asking, how did you manage to escape? I mean, I'm aware that the portal was opened, but I'm surprised that the these archfey of which you speak uh, did not try to come through in your steed. Oh, they did. She looks to Sinmare. I thought, was this not spread amongst your people? Sinmare kind of looks a bit confused, looks back at you guys as if looking for some sort of like signal. Seeing most of you probably looking a bit confused or blank faced, she looks back at Sinmare. Uh, can, yeah. Can, can I just try and sort of do like to Sinmare, just sort of try and do like a roll with this? So like, sure. <laughs> sure. Kind of hand signal behind her back. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, Sinmare looks back and goes, Unfortunately, we have not had many opportunities to inform everyone of what was happening in the Feywilds. Uh, if you could repeat your tale one more time. You watch as Astarian takes a, a deep, shuddering breath. <laughs> we... We fought against them. We brought together as many of our people as we could. But the group you see before you is but a fraction of those that are still trapped in the Feywilds. A fraction of those that were able to escape. <clears throat> we launched a rebellion against our captors. We slew many of the Archfey when we... when. 
Sinmare reached out and we discovered that there was a way to break out. We took it. The elves, for at least the last five generations, have been arming themselves and slowly building up power, ready to take advantage of any opportunity they could. The Archfey often bring in people, creatures from other lands, to play with. And then when they get bored of them, they cast them aside. We were hoping to use one of those transient portals as a way to escape, but they're always well guarded. Sinmare punctured a hole through reality into a place the Archfey had never intended, never guarded before, and we were able to escape. They were quick to respond, however, and a number of us were trapped there. It was luck that as many of us got through as we did. I apologize for you having to retell that tale, but uh, it is uh, illuminating information for us. Well, I thank you for your time and for your consideration of our needs and requirements. Uh, and thank you for offering a sanctuary on your world. Yes. Um, well, I, I believe we have much to discuss in uh, locating uh, the most optimal location. And she just sort of looks at the others as like... Yeah. Any, anyone else have any <laughs> questions, any other comments they wanted to make before the elves head back into their camp? No, but I, I will offer them some of the snacks that I brought. Oh, oh yeah. Big snacks. Big snacks. Do these, do these, <laughs> you can these snacks like almost crush the elves? Massive yeah. fruits, cheeses, breads, but huge. And the elves like come pull out swords and you carve can... off sections of them to, to eat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, does that work? Yeah. So other... <sighs> Are the flora in at this point in time all like giant scale on Nastea? You don't know. That's a good question. As oh. you as you look around towards the trees, yeah, there are some massive trees. Most of them seem to be like normal tree size that you're used to, but there are a number of enormous trees. Interestingly, with these almost like yellow gold foliage. Yeah. Some of them with, with that, yellow that, gold, we, some of them with blood red, I should say. But we, massive we, trees. Like I have does this exist on Osteus to, to like in current time or or not? You've no, you've never seen these trees before. Never seen these before. Okay. Yeah. Wow. All right. That's interesting. Alrighty. Perfect. As Sinmare uh, leans down and speaks to uh, Astarian, uh, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, we will be in contact if there's anything else, and please contact me if there's anything that you need. I will do my best to. What was that, sorry, Ali? Uh, she's just sort of mouthing to whoever has the maps. It's like, do we give them the maps? Yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, yeah. Who's got the maps? <laughs> who, who has who the maps? The maps? Uh, Doesn't matter. Well, if, if one of you wants to say they brought the maps, that's fine. I know you guys also spoke about it. Probably not. The only person I'd say probably shouldn't be holding them is the fire giant, who is slowly on fire <laughs> at all times. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Cy. <sorry. laughs> probably best not for you to handle paper. <laughs> no, I really. <laughs> I mean, you could have, and then as you look down, charcoal just like falls between your fingers like a gentle rain. <laughs> well, we, we, we brought these in case you uh, needed to get acclimatized to your new home. Thank you. You are too kind. Uh, we will distribute these throughout the, the various camps and make sure that people can familiarize themselves with their new temporary home. Thank you. We also ask, um, until we do come to a decision on where you um, will uh, ultimately be settled, if it's a suitable location, um, do you need anything in the meantime? Uh, resources or you have enough food and everything? Yes, thank you. That, that has all been taken care of. Uh, thank you. Wonderful. Well, we thank well? you. All the elves thank you for your generosity. She stands back, nods, and the elves begin heading back into their camp. Sinmare looks up to you and goes, Well, I think that went rather well, actually. Um, thank you. That was very well handled. I, I was expecting... Well, that was very, very gentle. Um, is there anything else you need from me? Otherwise, I will make my way back to the ship. If you wanted to look around or stay in the city, you're welcome to. Otherwise, uh, I think we were planning on heading back to the council chambers. I think you've given us this 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 meeting has given us all some consideration mm -hmm. it seems you, the elves don't want to be split up so we have some decisions to make 
Have you come to a decision? I think we will need to discuss that first. I think so, yeah. Of course. Yeah. Mm. With that, you guys head back onto the long ship and take off heading back towards the Storm's Redoubt, hovering high above, above the cloud layer, this massive flying castle. And that is where we're going to wrap up for tonight. And we will come back next episode to see how you guys continue to handle this. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. This has been a lot of fun getting to explore more of the uh, the giant echoes, the uh, the echoes of the past. And uh, I'm really looking forward to getting to do a bit more with these. So, yeah, thank you very much. That is all from us here tonight. Until next time, stay safe, stay well, and we will see you all again really soon. I'll just see if there's any channels up that we might want to go raid ah oh, let's go raid meeples and dragons they're lovely we'll go raid them i will organize that raid right now so if you're in twitch make sure you hang around because we're going to go raid the meeples and dragons page but for those of you who are watching on youtube or on the podcast thank you so much if you can leave a like or a comment or a subscribe or five star review whatever it is that is on that platform uh. it'd really help us out thank you so much all right everybody stay safe stay well and we will see you all again next time for more return of the giants until then Goodbye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.